Hey Bookaholics and welcome back to another video. Today I am bringing you a dedicated series review to The Galactic Milu series by Julian May. The Galactic Milu series is a uh, series that is a prequel and a standalone also to the uh, Saga of the Exiles or Saga of the Pliocene Exiles by Julian and May. I have in fact reviewed the Saga of the Exiles. As far as I'm aware it is currently the only review <laughs> on YouTube of the Saga of the Exiles so I'm really sorry because it's like the second review I ever did. I, I did it like a month after reading it so there are some <laughs> inconsistencies in there. It's not very good. I do need to redo it but just know <laughs> <laughs> that you have a review and the sentiment is there in case you're interested. <laughs> but that being said, today I'm talking instead about the Galactic Milu series. The Galactic Milu is comprised of Intervention, which is a bridge standalone that crosses the Saga of the Exiles and the um, Galactic Milu together, Jack the Bodiless, Diamond Mask and Magnificat. This series is a sci-fi, slightly with fantasy elements, um, classic. It's, it was, uh, the original series was written in the 80s, this does span also into the 90s, I believe, and we are following, um, our planet as we are on the brink of being brought into the Galactic Milu. The Galactic Milu is a, um, galactic alliance of different alien species. And these alien species have been observing humans for a while to see um, if we are yet capable of entering into this alliance. This a lot of the time hinges on our metapsychic abilities. Metapsychic abilities are basically the Charles Xavier powers. It's, you know, uh, telekinesis, telepathy, um, all of the kind of like psychological powers, far speaking, etc., which is like to communicate uh, internally over large distances. And it's a very um, interesting system because obviously it is pitched as being uh, about the, it's like a science, it's a neurological thing, very much like they do in X-Men where it's like powers but have like scientific uh, explanations to them as opposed to like it being a magic system. But it, it, it does feel very much like a hard magic system. So if you are a fan of hard magic systems, I would still very much recommend this series. And this is a series I went into not knowing very much about exactly what it was going to cover. I know that we have um, the character of Rogatien Ramiad, who is also this like very well respected uh, figure in the Saga of the Exiles. I knew that he was going to be in it. However, I did not know um, which period of his life because Rogatien is someone who lives for a very long time. So I didn't know exactly what period it would be covering and I was excited still to be getting into it. Um, anyway, uh, so the first book, Intervention, covers uh, the majority of Rogatien's life, from him as a young child, um, as one of the first people to develop metapsychic abilities and have a decent control over them alongside his twin brother. And then we have, you know, how his life spans up until the point where we are part of the Galactic Milu. The thing about this book specifically, I am going to talk about this one a little bit on its own first because this one is essentially a standalone, it's like the bridge book between the two series. The thing about this one that I really loved is that it is also like, so it's sci-fi with like basically a hard magic system and this one also is like a historical fiction. We have several key historical events that happened in the 20th century featured in this. For example, the Laika, the dog that got sent out into space is in, the, in here. Uh, we have facets of the Cold War in here. It's it's fascinating because, you know, we have like key historical events of, you know, the last century uh, featured in here alongside the, the sci-fi slash magical elements that the author brings to the story. So I really, really liked this because it was basically an amalgamation of all three of my favourite genres. <laughs> in the rest of the trilogy, however, the, the core trilogy that we have. Um, we are actually following uh, the family, the Rogatien Ramiard family. So, you know, we have Rogatien and then in here we have all of the other Ramiards. Rogatien is the character in these, but we have his, you know, 
descendants in some way, shape or form um, throughout the galaxy, as well as we also have just other really, really powerful meta psychics um, being incorporated into this story as well. Um, and yeah, it's basically just centered around the Remyard family. And I, I really loved that dynamic because we do have just this really powerful, really dysfunctional family having a huge impact on the galaxy. With that, I'm going to get into some of the characters. I do like doing my reviews in a specific order. So we'll start with the characters. And I I really, really love Raul Gutien. Raul Gutien is is amazing. He's just such a, a, a fascinating character because he feels so real. And like, you know, he goes from being this like weird, easily bullied kid to this like stiff upper lipped, um like you know i know what is right i'm very very moralizing young man to this just kind of like really wholesome old man that he eventually becomes i love seeing his progression it feels incredibly natural seeing the things that he sees it is really really easy to engage with him on that level and i really love reading Rogatian. Um, uh, I really love the way that the whole family tree thing becomes such a key part of the story as well. So all these people are interconnected, which means that you do have some toxic relationships. You do have some difficult relationships and like Julian May doesn't shy away from that. You know, like how just fucking up your kids makes fucked up people kind of thing. I really, really appreciated that she went there. Um, so, you know, we do have uh, characters like Dennis and we do have characters like Mark and they are really fascinating characters, but also at the same time, I don't really want to go into them too much because they are obviously descendants. So I can't really go into like their social situation because I don't want it to ruin uh, um, intervention. So um, just know that I really found that a lot of the characters were well developed. I did find that a couple of the characters in the later books were within the confines of logic you are following people who are becoming like really hyper rational like they you know they are having to rationalize everything um and it's fascinating but it does mean that you do lose a little bit of that like warmth and like love and care that i maybe had for like rogati and some of the characters in saga of the exiles um but it doesn't feel unwarranted so it's still really well done as to the plot of this series Whew. Okay, so the series is is complicated, and obviously I can't talk about the latter books. But as I said, the, the overall plot is that we are being incorporated slowly into the galactic milieu. You do get the perspectives of these aliens that are observing us, like they have been tasked with observing Earth to see if we will reach the point where our metapsychic abilities are strong enough that we can be incorporated into the galactic milieu like it's the metapsychic develop, development is basically like a um a benchmark in just evolution and you need to have basically reached that benchmark to be able to be considered for the galactic milieu um and therefore it discusses a lot of really interesting themes in this plot we have themes including themes of like eugenics because of you know like breeding preferred family lines for the sake of uh enhancing meta psychic abilities and we have you know the ethics of that versus you know just marrying and mating with someone for love etc and we do also have you know the the idea of of different races still being segregated as well so it's it's, it's very interesting the way that she tackles it and i i, I always really like julian may's themes i think that she tackles real world topics really well because she does it kind of very sternly but not too preachy um she more poses it as a question which i i really like the development of this series in comparison to the saga of the exiles is that i find that um this one one of the issues that i do have with this one is that because it does feature things like technology etc it did struggle a little bit more in terms of being realistic because obviously these were written in the early 90s which you know the way technology has progressed over the last 30 years is so immense that based on our current trajectory that technology doesn't seem accurate. However, you know, the second that you just factor in, hey, this was written in the 90s, then, you know, it seems fine. But it is one of those that does like take you away from the immersion a little bit. Like it's one of those that didn't age quite as gracefully as possibly the Saga of the Exiles, which does not feature any technology 
could have. However, in terms of developing the world building, they do actually interconnect really, really well. I am going to be doing a separate video with a, like, should you read on the series, including, you know, uh, the recommended reading order that I have for them, etc., and reasons why. So that is coming at some point. So for now, just, you know, the, the, the books do interweave really, really well. There is a specific recommended reading order that I have for you because you can spoil the Saga of the Exiles with this series. So just bear that in mind. Julia May has a very, very distinctive writing voice. I really enjoy reading her books. It always feels really, it felt really comforting to come back to these books after loving the Saga of the Exiles so much. Um, it is quite straight to the point, but it does have like a classic sci-fi vibe to it as well. I do find her to be generally more personable than a lot of classic sci-fi authors as well. So if one of your problems with classic sci-fi is that it does feel a little bit soulless, do know that these don't. And she does put the work in for the characters. Like I said, that does diminish slightly in the latter couple of books, but with good reason. And by then you're so invested in the story that it doesn't actually, I find, impact enjoyment at all. Um, it would be out of character for it to be otherwise. So just like bear that in mind that it does happen, but nowhere near to the same extent as you would get in like Asimov, for example, where they are quite impersonable. I always find that Julia May's pacing is really well thought out. She has enough time for slow exposition. She never, I never find that she info dumps too much. You do go on certain steep learning curves at times, but I never found to be like really info dumped, which I really appreciate. So I, I'm, I'm enjoying reading her pacing the entire way through the book. At no point do I feel like something is a slog. At no point do I feel like, okay, so much is happening and I have no clue what is going on, including an intervention where you are seeing a huge span of time from when Rogatian is, I think he's about four at the beginning of the book, all the way through to him being like a hundred and something year old man. And it does not feel rushed, despite it not being like that, that chunky. I mean, they are chunky. They're about 500 pages. Oh no, this one is chunky. It's like 700 pages. Um, but like you are covering such an expansive amount of time and some a very interesting person's entire life and it doesn't feel like a slog and at the same time it doesn't feel rushed. I think that she did a really good job with pacing these books out. So going in now finally to the world building and the magic system which are my favourite parts of this world. Obviously this world is one where we are you know joining into a galactic alliance so it does have that space the vastness of space feel to it. It does have that um, anything is possible, the sky's the limit feel. And at the same time, you have just this kind of oppressive uh, mentality going to it as well, where you know you have people who are opposing joining this galactic alliance and some for good reason, things like fear of eugenics, fear of being dominated. And then other people who is just, you know, on pure fear of the unknown and, and bigotry and hatred. So you do have some really interesting discussions that go on around this. And I think that Julian May constructed it in a really believable way. And I really appreciated that. While at the same time, I do think that the central focus of this story are the characters. So I think that she did a really good job of like slowly integrating this unusual setup um, what, around these really interesting characters around, specifically around this one family really, and how people connect to this family eventually. Um, and again, incredibly well written story in that sense. You have some very interesting characters, even the ones that aren't very personable, you can get hugely invested in on interest alone, kind of like almost in a Sherlock Holmes sense, where it's like, you're so smart, I'm really interested in you. Um, and Julia May did a really good job, I think, of doing the whole like writing characters that are smarter than you. I know a lot of authors really struggle with writing intelligent characters, if they are a lot more intelligent than themselves. And I think that Julia May pulled off having these really intelligent characters and they all seemed quite different as well. It wasn't just this this one archetype of intelligent person, I'm gonna keep reusing it. So I think she did a really, really good job of integrating these characters into this world, surrounding the world around these characters in a way that meant that we understood what was happening in the wider world, but we were driven through by the characters, which meant that it was more personable than we'd previously gotten in sci-fi for the most part. And as I said, I think that the kind of science-y science uh, explanation to the magic system was really interesting. It is essentially a magic system, let's be honest. It's, you know, telepathy and telekinesis, which are, you know, generally magic. 
Um, but, you know, giving that scientific spin to it, the explanation to it, made it at least a hard magic system. I always really like logic-based, uh, sci-fi logic-based um, magic, so, you know, that worked really well for me. Um, and I, I think the fact that you even have the characters themselves, like, striving to understand it, delving into it, and really wanting to learn more about these abilities, I think is also really, really cool. Um, and the difference that you have between, you know, people in like the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s, versus, you know, people in, you know, modern day, um, or, you know, even in the future, looking into it and like the different lenses that they cast on it. And, you know, once more people start arising with these abilities versus, you know, when you're only following like two people who have it. And it's it's really interesting, and I think she she made the intrigue there, but also, like I said, she made it really intimate. And now I'm going to get into the pros and cons that I normally do. First off, the three pros that I can most point out are just the logic of this series. If you are someone who really likes logic, then you'll like the way that she does world building, the way that she does her magic system, the way that she constructs society um the questions that she poses etc all of the kind of like logic and the fact that it makes you think i think is really well done but brings me to my second point where as i keep saying you do really get invested in these characters and you are really interested in these characters which means that i think that she did a really good blend of you know making sure that the logic is there but without it being at the risk of being too dry and then the other thing, of course, that I'm going to mention is just the plots. Like, they are really, really interesting, really intriguing. The, the questions that she poses throughout the plots, I think that I I always struggle to put down her books because I find them so intriguing, even when not very much is happening for a moment because we need a, a slow moment for character development. I still struggle to put down her books. As to cons, obviously, as I said, it is dated. It is written in the early 90s so certain things don't necessarily hold up and more so than with the saga of the exiles because as i said we are featuring things like sciences and technologies being studied um which is not so prevalent in the saga of the exiles because of the nature of the series um so do bear that in mind as i did say as well some of the characters the in the later series do become so hyper logical that they do feel a little bit less personable so if they aren't characters that you had previously gotten really invested in or you haven't latched on to something in the series then the latter ones might feel a little bit dry and fall into that usual trope of being a little bit too dry sci-fi uh, i personally didn't feel that at all and i really really enjoyed the way the characters were and i really liked the progression that they made and how it made sense but it might bug some people and the last point that I would like to point out is, of course, that she does have a very straight to the point uh, writing style, which, you know, again, is not necessarily uh, a con because some people really enjoy having a straight to the point sci-fi um, because then it's, I think flowery sci-fi can get a little bit convoluted. It means that it's, you know, okay, what's a metaphor and what's like this part of the made up world? Like, I always find them a little bit over, over written sometimes and I really like my sci-fi to be straight to the point because then it feels hypological it actually suited the setting and the characters really well so I really enjoyed it but again if you are wanting a little bit more of like a whimsical or immersive um writing style then this again might possibly not be for you but that is it that is it for my review of this series so I hope I've done a better job with this one than I did with the saga of the exiles <laughs> but um you have to let me know I will hopefully catch you in another one soon so let me know if you have read the series or if you've read anything at all by Julian May because I'm really curious because there really aren't enough people on the internet that have but that is all for me for today so I'll catch you in another one soon. Bye!